Okay, so this video is gonna be all about lenses. Um, I have a bunch. Uh, some of them I don't use and some of them I use all the time. And so this is just gonna be from least used to most used. So by the end, it's all my workhorses. So this whole batch is starting off. It's gonna be pretty much stuff I don't use anymore. So we'll just go through it real quick. Uh, this is a, a CCTV lens. I believe this is a 50 millimeter 1.4. Uh, it's terrible. Um, I don't actually have the adapter to fit on my four thirds right now because I, I used to have Sony's, but it's, it's, it's horrible. Um, for what it was used for, no problem, and they're super cheap, so that's why they're everywhere. Uh, no reason to talk about it any more than that. Uh, this is a Vivitar, uh, so it's, a, it's an original, I think it's a 1980s Tokina style or 1970s Tokina style. It's a really beautiful lens. It's a 35 millimeter, I believe it's a 2.8, and it just, it looks awesome. Um, I actually have a lens set that I'll get to later for my, for my narrative stuff. That's all basically Vivitar Tokina vintage lenses. Um, this is just one of the weird ones that doesn't match anything and it's kind of too soft to use. So it looks cool, but honestly, I, I'll probably just sell it just because it's, it's like a cool vintage lens. It does have something cool though that some of these older lenses have, which is it's got two aperture control rings. So you can set your aperture and then you can do the aperture preview. So you have sort of the cheaters version of uh, uh, opening, opening the aperture click list without having to actually declick it. Anyway, it's a cool lens, just it's, you know, it doesn't work for me. Uh, moving along, this is another out of that Vivitar Tokina kit uh, that I don't use very much. This is a, let's see, it's a 105 2.8 and it is uh, like numbers matching. It's a, it's a Tokina vintage lens. It's really cool. Um, I just need to repair it because the focus ring is absolutely like basically, basically stuck. Like it, it just barely moves. Uh, it's cool though. I like it. It just doesn't work for me. Uh, for my kit, it does have sort of a retracting hood if you're into that, but at 105 millimeters on like a micro four thirds or an APS-C camera, it's very long. It's, you know, it's between what, like 260 and, and two, I, I don't know. I don't know the math. Anyway, moving along, uh, you probably recognize this one. This is a Chrome Jupiter, what a Jupiter eight, I believe. Yeah. Jupiter eight, 50 millimeter F2. Uh, mine is absolutely filthy and it's, it's fun. It's very dirty. Uh, the focus ring is kind of sticky and you know, it's fun. It, you know, these are, these are cool lenses. Uh, it's just, mine is absolutely disgusting. If you look on the inside, there's just so much going on in there and, uh, it's just kind of too soft for what I'm doing. So it's a cool lens and you know, you can get them a dime a dozen, maybe not that cheap. Uh, in addition to that, it's, it's tw sister. I don't even know the name in Indistar, I think. So Jupiter and Indistar, uh, this is a 28 millimeter pancake. And so most of this is just the adapter ring. So if we lose the adapter ring, yeah, that's the lens right there. Come on. Isn't that wild? Uh, yeah, it's a little 28 millimeter 2.8. It's cool. Uh, to change the aperture, you actually have this inner ring and you do it and it's, it is what it is. Um, the focus markings are completely wrong. So I need to change it again, but uh, interesting little lens, interesting little pancake lens. Next up we have, uh, when I bought a vintage Canon FD camera, uh, it came with this. This is an Albinar, I believe 28 to 80, and it's a push pull lens. Um, and I believe it's like 3.5 to 4 point. Yeah. So it's not, it's, it's silly. It's a fun, silly lens. Um, 28 to 80 is not super useful on micro four thirds. Cause that's what 56 to 160 like pretty, pretty long, but it, it got me through, you know, early days. It's not sharp. Uh, another one out of the Vivitar Tokina set that didn't make the cut. This is a F2 24 millimeter. So of actually a very cool, kind of an expensive vintage Vivitar Tokina lens. Um, only problem is when I, uh, declick the aperture, it's now it's too loose. So I need to go back in there and fix the aperture, but the other thing is it's just too, it's too soft. Even with my lens set being incredibly soft, it's just too soft. So I'll probably just sell it on at some point. It is what it is. Um, this one also came out of my vintage Canon, uh, I believe it was an AE one buy that I got. This is a Rokinon, uh, 28, 2.8 Canon FD and it's got a uh, macro. So I've used it. I enjoy it. It's fun. It's all metal, which is nice. Cause it's an, it's an original Rokinon, uh, but because it's a macro, the, 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 you know, non macro use, uh, it goes from there to there. So it's basically impossible to grab focus. If you're not doing macro, that's kind of why I don't use it. 
Also, I have a better 28 millimeter in Canon anyway. Yeah, so that's the first batch. These are all stuff that I don't use basically ever. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so this batch of lenses I use slightly more, but not really at all. Uh, if you recognize this one, this is your Helios 44.2. You know, it's a it's a cult lens. It's really fun. It's Russian. There's a million of them. There's a million types of them. Uh, this one actually has a really great focusing ring, but it's just at 58 millimeters. It's pretty long on a micro four thirds. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool lens. My only real complaint is it doesn't really match with anything else, especially with the swirly bouquet. So uh, it looks cool. I think they use it on some shots in the Batman, like the car chase. But the you know as far as matching it with other lenses, you basically can't, and so it kind of needs to be its own thing. It's just hard to justify putting it in stuff. Uh, but it's a very fun photography lens. I enjoyed shooting with it. Moving on, this is uh, another one of those that I just happened to pick up at some point. I think it was with that Canon kit. This is a I believe it's a Sears multi coated sixty to three hundred, like a four to five point six. This is just like a commodity cheapo push pull zoom. Uh, if I only really use it if I need to do photography and if I need to see something very, very, very far away, uh, it, it works for that. It has like sand in it, so uh, it's garbage. It's filthy. I it's it's fun. I like I like it for what it is, but yeah, it's just it's just a really long sort of greasy, greasy lens. Um, most of these are all Canon FD, obviously the M, uh, M42 for the Helios, but the rest of these are all Canon FD because. It's easy to uh, adapt Canon FD to you know shorter flanges, so like Sony or Micro Four Thirds. Um, this is a proper Canon FL lens. Uh, this is an FL 135, or was it a 105? Yeah, it's a 135 f 2.5 FL, so like 1960s era. It has the uh, the front aperture that is controlled by the end. It's a very heavy metal barreled glass lens. Um, yeah, it's cool. I like it. It's just you know at 135, unless you're unless you're doing really long portraits or something, there's just better ways to do it. Uh, and it's just it's really heavy and it's kind of like ungainly on small cameras, uh, but it's cool. It's it's a little soft because it's vintage. So uh, this definitely came out of that uh, when I bought that Canon. Uh, this is a 70 to 210 from Canon, so it's not an L lens by any means, but it's got internal focusing. It's a push pull lens. Um, it's great. It's plastic. It feels brand new. It's it's just I like it a lot. It's very simple and 70 to 210 is basically the the older version of the 70 to 200. So yeah, no complaints uh, other than you know, it's 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 just as plastic as any of the other Canon FD lenses. Uh, it is what it is. It's an F4 by the way. Uh, this is the Nifty 50 from Canon. The FD, so 1.8, 50 millimeter, plastic. It, it is what it is. I have a couple of these. They're fine. They're very light. They're very small. Um, I, no complaints. Cool, cool little lens. Uh, very plastic. Um, this is an FD. I believe it's the, the the mid the mid range. So like SSC. That's why it's orange. Um, yeah, it's a 28 millimeter, 2.8. I really like this lens, especially with a speed booster on my, um, no, don't do it with your fingers, Matt. Uh, on my, on my Panasonic and my Blackmagic with a speed booster, this acts like about a 40 or 42 millimeter. Really cool lens, really cool point of view. Uh, big fan. It's not quite as small as the 50 millimeter, but it's, you know, it's still very small. And I do, especially if I'm committed to using Canons for something, I do sort of use this whole group right here, these three, this 2850 and then 70 to 210, because they all reasonably color match. Uh, this old uh, Canon FL lens does not. So anyway, moving on. Okay, so this is a weird set and I'm really happy that I have this set. It's just, it makes me smile. These are tiny. Here's a regular size pen for scale. That's how tiny these, these lenses are. This 24 is absolutely tiny. These are Pentax Auto 110 lenses and they do adapt uh, I have an adapter here for micro four thirds, but I think they can go as, as big as uh, APS-C. So uh, this is the 18 millimeter, which I actually use a lot because it's just, it's convenient. The only weird thing about these lenses, other than the fact that they're shockingly tiny, is uh, their fixed uh, aperture f2.8. So you just have to know that going in. Am I grabbing focus? I can't tell. There we go. So here's the 24. The 24 is by far the smallest one. It's just, it's shocking how small it is. Uh, it's it's hilarious even with the bit focus barrel, you know going out 
that's how big it gets. So absolutely hilarious and reasonably sharp. They're not the sharpest. They're about as sharp as those Canon FD lenses. Uh, I like them though. I, I, again, I especially like the 18. Here's the 50 millimeter. So still for what it is, a teeny tiny lens, they're all plastic. And then the only metal one is this 75 millimeter. So Michael Four Thirds equivalent of 150. And it's this little guy right here. And, and honestly for scale, and this is going to be extra exaggerated because it's a pocket 4k cause it's a kind of a big Michael Four Thirds camera. But let me just show you how obnoxiously big the camera is compared to the lenses themselves. Yeah, there's your 18 millimeter. That's, I use this all the time cause it's basically a 36 millimeter full frame equivalent, which is a pretty good, pretty good size, but look how just ridiculously small that is. Um, it's, it's ridiculous. It really is. It's, it's even more shocking in person. And let me pop on the 24 just to really sell it for you. Yeah. So there's the 24 and it is, it's the same d dimensions as the, d the flange itself, which is, which is just crazy. So, uh, yeah, don't use the 24 quite as much, but again, a great focal length because that's the 50 millimeter equivalent. So I ain't mad at it, but I usually use the 18. So yeah, that's my auto 110 sit and, uh, they make me smile. Okay, so these are my Vivitar Tokina set. These are vintage lenses. Um, basically, I figured out that Vivitar uh, had a bunch of different manufacturers, but certain manufacturers were actually Tokina. So these are like vintage Tokina lenses. Uh, I do have a speed booster. I believe it's a Zongyi, uh, you know, basically FD to micro four thirds. So I had to figure out how to adapt everything to Canon FD, which was actually quite, quite easy because most of these are M42 mount. So I just have uh, a screw mount adapter that goes into Canon FD. No big deal. So it's just going through the list here. Uh, here is the 17 millimeter, kind of an expensive lens, honestly. Um, and this is legitimately a Tokina lens. So this is the same as the Tokina 17 millimeter. I believe it's a 3.8, 3.5. So pretty big piece of glass, all things considered. Uh, kind of a heavy lens, metal. Uh, this is actually the Nikon mount. So you can see that there's the, the catch there that I took off, but it's Nikon to Canon and then Canon to speed booster. Yeah. So moving right along, uh, this is the 20 millimeter and it is really obnoxious and it's kind of fun. I kind of enjoy it. Uh, this is not a Tokina. This is a different company, but it's, it looks about the same and it's about as sharp as the Tokinas. Um, all these are kind of, uh, they're vintage lenses. So they're a little soft and they're a little low contrast, but this is definitely the weirdest one. Um, this is an M42 screw mount and it has this just obnoxious piece of front glass. It's crazy. And it actually comes with this uh, metal lens hood that you can cut yourself on. Um, obviously I don't use it cause I have it in this case, but yeah, cool lens. Um, kind of the reason why I try to get as many wide angle lenses is since I'm doing micro four thirds, you know, basically you got to play in the full frame equivalent. And so a 17 is either a 34 or if you have a speed booster, it's more like a 20, what, 20, 21 or 22. So a 20 is more like a 24. So they're basically each, one step up in the order. So the 20 acts like a 24, the 24 here acts like a, maybe a 28 or a 35, that whole thing. So this is a 24, uh, 2.8. I like it. It's just a rough and gruff lens. It's got an FD mount on it. Um, it's very soft and it's very low contrast, but it just, it's, it's just a little trooper. That's, that's all I can really say about it. It's kind of just a tank. It's not perfect. And I've, I've shot stuff on my YouTube channel on it and people keep asking me if I've been in a fight because it makes my eyes look so sunken, uh, because it's so, it's so low contrast that I don't know. Anyway, maybe I'm blaming my incompetence, uh, on the lens 28 millimeter. This is a, another, this is a Tokina. This is the 28 2.8. And yeah, this is basically the most common lens that I go to in this box. This whole box is basically just for narrative stuff. I only do it for that. And only if I know I can work, like slow moving. If I need to work fast moving, I'll find different lenses or I'll rent something that just works. Uh, yeah, but you know, for vintage, a vintage set that has a little bit of everything, I'm enjoying this. And again, the 28 is sort of the one I go to the most because with a speed booster, it's the full frame equivalent of like 40 millimeters. And that seems to be where my, where my heart lies. Uh, I thought I was cool enough for really wide angle stuff, but I'm just not. And so 28 or, or longer, you know, 35, a lot of times, especially if there's no speed booster. So here's the 35. Uh, again, this is a, this is a, a Tokina 35. This is the exact same thing as the Tokina 35 of the same era. And my only gripe is 
the focus ring is really stiff. I need to fix it. And because it's a M42 mount, sometimes I'll try to move the focus ring and unscrew the lens off the, off the mount. So it, it is what it is. It's fine. It's just one more to the list. Most of these color match reasonably well. I believe the, the 17, the 20, the 28, and the 35 all match colors pretty well, and this long lens too. Uh, the 24 is just different, and the 50 is not a Tokina lens, it's a different company. It's the tiniest Nifty 50 I've ever seen. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. This is, uh, let's see, probably, yeah, something like this is probably close to a Canon FD, maybe split the difference. That's how much smaller this one is, so. It's pretty wild. Um, yeah, it's, you know, you just need a 50 millimeter. It's not perfect and everything goes a little bit magenta, but if you need 50 millimeters in this fairly wide kit, uh, you got it. And then the last in the list, cause I took out those ones that I don't use obviously, is this uh, zoom lens. This is a, I believe it's a 70 to, what did I say? 70 to 205, 75 to 205 uh, zoom lens. Again, this is a Tokina, even though it's branded Vivitar. Uh, you know, you can do, actually this one isn't Tokina. 22 is a different company. Anyway, 37 is usually the, the Vivitar or the Tokina one. But yeah, it's internal focusing, which is nice because those other Canon lenses are external focusing. They're push pulls. So that's nice. Uh, it's filthy. I, I barely ever use it, but you know, nice zoom ring or nice uh, focus ring. And it is what it is. You know, this is basically a prime box with a, with a backup lens if you need it. That's kind of the thing. So, and then the speed booster, obviously. Uh, but yeah, like I, like I said, uh, I only really use this on narrative stuff or if I'm like experimenting because it's just, it's a whole thing. There's a bunch of adapters involved. And so it's a very slow moving process and, uh, you're going to get what you're going to get. They're vintage lenses. So they're not nearly as sharp as modern lenses. And so yes, they're sturdy. Yes, they look cool, but at the end of the day, and they're small, which is pretty fun. But at the end of the day, you know, convenience usually trumps, uh, style. I had to say anything. Anyway, that's my narrative box. Okay, and so now we're actually at lenses that I actually use all the time. Uh, so this first one uh, has been beat up. This is like the skateboarder classic from the mid 2010s. Uh, this is the original version of the Rokinon 8mm Canon FD. I bought it used for like 90 or 100 bucks. It's cracked, it's beat up, uh, the hood's cracked, it's a permanent hood. I don't have a, a cap for it, so I just have a duct tape cap or a gaff tape cap. At some point, the cap is going to pull off the pull off the ring because it's already getting the sort of the Rokinon uh, glue separation. So at some point, I'm just going to yank that off. Uh, it's going to happen. So I thought I was cool and and could use wide angle, but as it turns out, I just don't use eight millimeters that much. Even even if you convert it to sixteen millimeters full frame equivalent, it's just not how I work. Uh, I did happen to use this a uh, couple times on a documentary a couple years ago on a C300 Mark II. And that was pretty hilarious because, you know, it's this huge camera and then you have this little tiny, you know, uh, three and a half inch long lens hanging off the front. So I enjoy it. Uh, again, I don't have many Rokinons, but I do have an eight millimeter and I also have a 16 millimeter. So this is a basically brand new 16 millimeter Rokinon. I was just in a warehouse somewhere because it is the four thirds mount, which is a dead mount that nobody uses, not the micro four thirds, four thirds. This is the 16 millimeter F2 four thirds mount that I paid like a hundred bucks for. I found a $20 micro four thirds adapter and there it is. So not, not super, you know, like upgrade friendly, like the Canon FD mount, but for a hundred bucks, it's a shockingly sharp lens. It's very heavy and it's very big uh, compared to, I'd say this is like the average size of the lenses that I own. It's a very big lens um, and it's, you know, almost twice the size in every single do in every single way, but it's cool for what it is. And it's 16 millimeters, which on micro four thirds is 32, which is very useful. So I like it and the F2 aperture is very helpful. Yeah, so those are my two Rokinons. And then the rest of these are basically Mikey lenses. They all have different brand names. I believe this was Bayosity or something, but uh, yeah, these are basically uh, Mikey, Mikey lenses that you can find on Amazon. Uh, these two, this is a 35 and a 50 mil. 35 is a 1.4, but the problem with the 35 mil is when it's completely focused to infinity, you can see the, the, the actual focusing barrel uh, goes back further. And so that's, that's not great. And so some cameras like my Panasonic really hate that and my Blackmagic couldn't care less. So uh, your mileage may vary. Uh, yeah, 35 on a, on a micro four thirds, 70 millimeters, it's pretty long. 
Uh, but to be fair, it's a teeny tiny, teeny tiny lens. So, you know, that's, that's a consideration. That's kind of why I like these Mikeys. Uh, they're teeny tiny. Uh, they're all manual. They have, um, you know, a declicked aperture, a reasonable focus throw. Uh, they're not built well, but they're fairly sharp and crazy enough. Not only are these all color matched, all these Mikeys, but they're actually color matched to the same color profile as those like Vedra prime ripoffs that Mikey makes. Uh, that are like $300 a lens. These were like $100 less a lens, I think like 60 or 70. The wide angle was a little bit more. So 35 I use, you know, the least out of the group. The 50 I use more just because it's a good sort of portrait lens. Again, it's 100 millimeters full frame equivalent. Uh, not much to show here because again, these, all these Mikey lenses are ostensibly the same lens. They just have different glass in them. So that's really the difference. Uh, so 35, 50, and then 12, I use quite a bit more because if I'm doing any YouTube stuff or if I'm doing any vlogging stuff, yeah, 12 millimeters is kind of the move. So it's a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent, very useful, really well put together lens, honestly, very impressed. Um, it wasn't as cheap as the other ones, but I like it a lot. This may be my favorite lens that I'm working with right now, just because it just, it does everything well. It's very reliable. It's very understandable and it's not crazy looking. So nobody's gonna nobody's gonna think twice about looking at it and then the last one and the one that I use the most because again I'm just not cool enough to do wide angle stuff 25 millimeters so 50 millimeter full frame equivalent 25 1.8 um, it's not perfect it has like a nick in the middle of the focus ring so that's you can feel it when you're focusing but again declicked aperture and it's just again if they made if Mikey made it like a 20 millimeter I would do that because that's like 40 millimeters I think that's really where my where my brain goes uh, especially for narrative stuff, but yeah, so 35, 50, 12, and 25, those are the, those are the lenses. Uh, and then there is one more lens that I use more than all the others, and I'm going to have to actually swap out my, my 12 in order to use it. So here we go. Ta-da! Yeah, this is the most used lens in my arsenal. This is a 12 to, uh, 12 to 32 Panasonic kit lens that they sell on their cheapest Panasonic Micro Four Thirds cameras. Uh, it's not a constant aperture. It's like a 3.5 to 5.6. It's just, it's the kit lens. And so it's, you know, every manufacturer has their own version of this kit lens. Uh, this is mine. And ironically, it's the most used in my kit. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm in a hurry or if I need autofocus, although this only has a manual focusing ring or manual, uh, uh, focal length ring, so it's only got the zoom ring. You have to autofocus manually on the back of the screen, uh, which is really unfortunate and very frustrating when you have something like a Blackmagic Pocket 4K because you have to like push to push to focus and it's very unreliable. But at the end of the day, 12 to 32, that's the 24 to 34 equivalent focal length. That's basically the standard 24 to 70 focal length. Very, very useful, very common. I use the 12 millimeter end, the 24 equivalent all the time. That's what I'm using right now still. Um, and you know, if they're all the way to 32, which is sort of portrait territory, it's just a good, it's a good thing. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's why every manufacturer sells some version of the 24 to 70 full frame equivalent lens. I, I thought I was better than that, but it turns out I'm not. Um, and I'm okay with it. So yeah, this one, this one's garbage. It's filthy. It's falling apart. I had to re-glue the zoom ring because you really have to wrench the zoom ring sometimes because it sticks and I had to put new witness marks on because when I glued the zoom ring out back on it just wasn't lined up correctly. It is what it is. Um, you know, when it breaks, I'll probably, if I still have the same cameras, buy the buy it again because it just it just works. There's no need for me to really go in to get the, the fancy 2.8 version because that's just not that's just not the kind of thing that I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, if when I, if when I change cameras, if when I change lens, uh, lens mounts, I'll probably end up picking up the equivalent 24 to 70 again, uh, just cause it's, it's useful. It's just useful. And you know, honestly, that's, that's the, that's the group. The only thing that, the only thing that I haven't shown you yet is this right here. This is just a POS handy cam camcorder, you know, ultimate dad camcorder. I have a bunch of these actually, and it has a fixed lens. Uh, so no zooming and no focus. It's just focus to infinity and it's about a 60 millimeter full frame equivalent. And what I found out, especially if you're doing like dad stuff, camcorder stuff, uh, you know, like man on the street kind of stuff, 60 is, is actually a pretty good focal length. I actually trust it a lot more. It's not wide at all. You know, it's past 50 millimeters, which is what everybody considers sort of 
standard slash portrait, uh, but it just, it just works. And so I think anything between about 40 and 65 as a full frame equivalent focal length is kind of, is kind of where things are just, they work and it's convenient and sort of everything can do it. So I'm very into it. Um, again, this is a terrible, horrible camera, but it's fun to, it's fun to use. I, I enjoy it and it forces me to, uh, you know, treat it for what it is. And that 60 millimeters is actually very, very, very useful. So even when I'm doing sort of camcorder stuff, but I'm not using these, I do try to find like a 40 or a 50 or a 60 millimeter, uh, full frame equivalent just because uh, it works, you know, it, it works. I thought I was cool enough to do wide angle stuff, but I just, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, my tastes, my tastes have evolved and I'm just not a wide angle guy anymore. Uh, not that I ever really was. So I'm not a long lens guy. I'm really not. I mean, you saw my, you saw my case of narrative stuff. It's all wide stuff, but yeah. So I just, I live in the middle. It is what it is. Um, I should probably sell some of these, especially some of those old ones that I don't use because they're just sitting around collecting dust, getting dirty and fungusy. Uh, but, but the table right in front of you, I use these all the time. Um, yeah, especially the stuff on the right for when I'm, when I'm working, when I'm, you know, creatively working uh, again, my zoom is my only real proper zoom that is digital these days. Uh, when I had Sony's, I had a bunch of zooms, but I don't anymore. Um, and again, if I'm going onto a set and we need to mix lenses, I have Rokinons. Everybody has Rokinons. Uh, the Mikey's match other Mikey's, which is awesome. And also these are small enough that they travel really well. And the thing is, you know, if I'm going on a project where I need to church it up, I need to have something fancier than what's on the table. I rent, uh, you know, it is what it is. No big deal. Um, it usually if it gets to a situation where I have to rent, I'll go, I'll end up renting a camera too. So the, the, that solves that anyway. I don't need to limit myself to sort of micro four thirds world, but yeah, you know, now you've seen it all. That's, that's everything I work with, but really every time I reach down, I reach down for something on this table, even if it's this little guy right here. So, uh, what'd you guys think? Uh, like, and subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Catch you next time.